kind of using this as I hope I get tired type of situation because I am awake. I hate the hospital when I can't sleep. It drives me insane. Also, I'm letting my computer update right now. I am having a bug on my computer of some sort where it is saying that it cannot access my camera because it's being used by another app. I've tried everything that I can find as far as like online help with that, doing the things, it, it still hasn't worked. So I don't know what's going on. Nothing else is using my camera that I can tell. It's just not letting me do it from my computer. But my phone works, so yay. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure what that is. If you know how to fix that, by all means, let me know. Because uh, it is driving me crazy at this point. Um, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, yeah. But it is currently 1 o'clock in the morning. I am kind of tired, but not sleepy. Um per se, or maybe it's the opposite way around, I don't know, freezing to death, I need, uh, it's 70 in here, I'm good, but, uh, yeah, today and yesterday, or today and tomorrow, well, I guess it's today now, but Tuesday and Wednesday have been some of the most annoying days I've had since I've been in the hospital, because it's like, okay, we know what's going wrong, we know what we need to do, we were playing the waiting game of wait till the cultures came back negative, for a certain amount of time, they did that. Um, and now we are in the waiting game of let's put back in my port, which is happening Thursday, which would be tomorrow now. Um, happening Thursday afternoon. I'm not really happy that it's the afternoon, but yeah. And then basically gonna have to be MPO most of that day, which is gonna suck. But hey, gotta do what you gotta do. I am ready to get the heck out of here and go home. Um, it's been, God, I don't even know how what day I came in the hospital. I want to say it was Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. So that's what we're doing. We're just waiting. So tomorrow's just going to be a kind of, today I guess it's going to be just a sit around and chill day. Maybe play some Warframe, maybe play some Minecraft. I don't know, we'll see. But I am... So ready to go home and get out of here. But, um, yeah. I'm really trying to get kind of sleepy. Because, God, I haven't slept very well. I've been sleeping really odd scheduled the last few days. And it's kind of not fun. Not cool. I sleep all dang day and then I don't get to hang out with anybody online. And then it makes me sad. And then I'm bored all night. I did get a little bit of time today because we played some Warframe and stuff and whatnot, but it was... I need to flush this. Hang on, I need to call in my nurse and get some water so that I can flush my tube. It's getting stuck again. But, um... Uh, I am out of water for that. see hang on so what are you guys up to see a couple of you on here what you up to at this time of night i am really kind of reactive and i don't like it i've been a lot more itchy today and i don't quite know why so i'll get here to bring over some it's literally right there i could get up but i'm on a bed alarm and i'm not allowed to get up I hate the bell alarm. I'm probably going to refuse it next time and just tell them I will call you. But, like, for this little thing, I don't need to call them. I can just get up and do it. But, nope, I have to. Um. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. Also, I have to track how much I actually flush because it's part of the ins and outs. But my tube's a little cranky, so. Hey, Calvin, neither can I yet. Eventually, I'm going to find a show to watch and chill out. Maybe play some ASMR for a little bit. That seems to help. Certain artists. I found a new ASMR artist. And uh, she's pretty good at getting me to sleep, which is awesome. Can't wait till May when 
partner is in bed with me and I don't have to worry so much about the sleeping problem. <laughs> because apparently both of us have a lot less insomnia when we're together and in bed. So yeah, but... Ugh. I just don't like late night in the hospital when I won't sleep or when I can't sleep. Hi. Hi. I just need to get the little cup over there filled with water so I can flush my G-tube a little bit because it's being stubborn. Oh, we need a little, we need like most of it filled. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got to play around with it a little while. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, does my brain just read that as dusty, and I don't know why. But yeah, sleeping is a problem. Oh, um, it's not so much scary for me. I'm used to it. It's not scary. It's just I am, like, everybody's asleep but me, and it's just like, why can't? I? Hello, thing. This is a horrid syringe. I don't like it. It spits at me all the time. Okay, let me, you guys get to see firsthand what I do when I, oh shit, why are we spilling out at me? Hang on, let me get that a little bit of water out of there, if it's gonna, oh you're gonna do the thing now? Okay, you do the thing. Now you're gonna be, there we go. It is a G-tube, whoa, come on. I have a G-tube and a J-tube. One is for draining, one is for eating. Or, one is for draining, one is, yeah. But this thing's being kind of picky and stubborn lately, and I don't, but. I will permanently have one. Um, unless through some miraculous situation my gastroparesis goes into remission, then I will be on a tube fed for pretty much the rest of my life. Um... Some people do gain remission. Mostly that's through surgeries. I am not a candidate for surgery. Um, for several reasons, but just not a candidate for it. So you're not going to spit on me. No, you don't. But you can have that. Spit all over me. Gastroparesis is a pretty awful disease, you know. It's... Yeah... I swallow great. I can physically eat. Um, like I can chew, swallow, all that jazz. But my stomach just doesn't digest the food. It sits in there for sometimes days. It's quite annoying. So. Um, that's why I have a drain. Uh, my G-tube does not get any form of nutrition into it. That's this thing. This one I just got. I just got these a couple days ago. The new ones. But, um, just got them changed out a couple days ago. As you see, that says jejunal. I'm sure it's backwards for you guys, but it says jejunal, and that means it goes into my intestine. This one doesn't say anything other than Mickey. Um, but this is a special one that is meant for, well, it's not meant for it per se, but this is one that has a different connection, and it's meant for draining. It makes it so, like, you don't get as many bigger food particles stuck all oh, that jazz it's a whole deal hopefully next time i'm going to talk to them um we were supposed to kind of change out for uh a low profile button for my j-tube at some point soon and i'm going to talk to them about it for next time uh we get my tubes changed every three months routinely so i'm hoping next time we can kind of do the low profile thing because that means that instead of having this, I just have one that's like, hang on, let me see if I can show you. That's like that tall. It's like as tall as, oh, let me show you. It's only as tall as like this thing. It's like really much smaller. It's called low profile. It's awesome. Um, but I cannot do that for my G tube because the buttons are notorious for not draining, which is what I need it to do. That's why it's still there. Uh, 
Um, so I don't have that type of tube, by the way. Um, mine has a inflatable balloon inside. I do not have a bumper balloon or a bumper tube. So it just, it just, um, they suck out the water. That's what this white part is. This is what they use. They, this is where the water goes to fill up the tube. Um, I also go c completely under anesthesia for my tube changes. So yeah, I don't deal with that. Yeah, they do. There's, unless I have to, I will never do that type. But I am asleep for all my tube changes. I have only ever been really, really awake for one of them. Um, and that was enough. Like, nope, it wasn't, it wasn't even that bad. It was just my G-tube. They were switching my GJ tube to just a G tube um, for draining, and they pulled it. They deflated the balloon, pulled it out, pushed a new one in. It was not comfortable, but it was like, if it was that, if it was only that every time, I wouldn't go to sleep. But uh, the problem is, I they always use like lidocaine and stuff to numb the area and whatnot. I don't absorb lidocaine properly, so it don't work. Um, and plus they're putting in a J tube and the J, the J tube you have to really go under unless you want to deal with a lot of discomfort and possibly pain. Um, I personally do not. The syringe sucks, but it's what I have. Um, so yeah, but thankfully I've never had any, uh, no tube pulled out. My tube has gotten yanked on a few times. Oops, this blue, blue, got myself away. Well, I've had my tube yanked on a few times. That's not fun. The dog almost yanked it out at one point. That was bad. Um, caused a lot of. Why are you? You evil syringe. No wonder if that's. A... Okay, I'm never using this kind of syringe. This is not the right syringe. <laughs> this is not the right syringe for the job, but. When I, when I asked them for a slip tip syringe, they didn't know what I was talking about, but she found this, so it, it works. I believe this is, like, meant for, like, a catheter or something. I don't know. Are you going to behave with just that, or am I going to pull the rest of it in there? So, I'll just give you that. Um, I'm going to try to let it sit for a minute. Oh, I yank on my tube accidentally all the dang time, and it's annoying. Especially the J-tube. That one I do it all the time, too. Because this is the one I mess with the most, as far as, like, I have to do meds and stuff through there. So, it gets messed with the most, and it gets yanked on the most. Um, but, yeah, we're... I still don't know why I'm in so much abdominal pain from... Like, it can't be infection, really, anymore. It's very much so internal stomach. I don't know what the problem is, whether my muscles are just messed up or what, but it's kind of annoying. And right now I'm on, like, 2 milligrams of Dilaudid and uh, Tramadol. I'm at, not IV Dilaudid, unfortunately. That shit would be working just fine. I honestly think, I, I don't know, but I want to... That we really need to up the Dilaudid, but I don't know if he's really willing to do that. It's really not because my body is not really absorbing it right now, so it's not fun. Um, you Trust me, you can tell when your body is absorbing pain medications and they're not. I don't know if it's just not high enough dose or what, but I might talk to pain management if I see him tomorrow and be like, can we try like increasing the dose because I'm really still hurting a lot and I don't know why so we might have to be trying because I'm on gabapentin tramadol and Dilaudid for the pain and it's just not quite working it's not like I'm not comfortable if I move yeah uh, if I move, it hurts a lot. So I don't know why I'm in so much pain that I feel like we're going to have to figure out. Like, there is also the fact that I do kind of have what's called a 
it's either a chronic ileus or pseudo obstruction. At this point, I've literally had this chronic obstruction for a month and a half now. And it's just not fully going away. I don't want to play Valorant, thank you. Go away. You, my computer restarted, so it's all got all the stuff going on. Yeah, like, I do okay if I don't move around a bunch, but the minute I'm kind of trying to move around to get comfy and stuff like that, it really does hurt standing up, going to the bathroom. Like, it really hurts. So I'm not totally sure what we're going to do about it. I will probably talk to my surgeon here in the next few weeks and see if we can kind of maybe try to figure out what's going on. Because we've tried, like, gabapentin for the nerve pain, which somewhat helped. It helped when my tube was, like, my G-tube was resting on a nerve. And that particular pain, it helped. But this type of pain, it's not helping. So I end up, like, living with a heating pad on my belly 24-7 just to help with the pain. Um, they're bringing up a heating pad here so at some point tonight. I don't know when. But um, it's not good for your skin to be on a heating pad all the time. You can literally burn it. And it almost, it looks, it looks so weird. I'll have some time, look up heating pad, like, um, what's it called? Erythema. Hey, John, long time no see, yeah. I've been on here a little bit more the last few days just because I'm bored. You know. But, um. Played Warframe for a while today. I might play some more tonight. Maybe some Minecraft if people get on. Ah, uh, thank. So when this whole this whole business started about a week ago, um, I woke up one day in a lot of stomach pain, and I kind of just pushed it off. I just sat on the heating pad a lot, took it real easy that day. Well, by that night, I had a 102 fever. It was 102.9 at its highest. And so we had a possible COVID exposure over Christmas. I don't think we really were truly exposed. I think they got COVID on their way home. But one of my best, longest friends, she literally is my longest friend outside of Andrew. Um, she came to visit for Christmas and uh, to donate to the moving fund so that in a way that I could not tell her no for the amount she gave me. And my heart just, oh, it was one, I, I almost cried. But anyway, um, so that night I was like, oh, fuck, I've got COVID. I, I was sure I had COVID again. But the next morning, nothing had changed. My fever hadn't broken. I had taken Tylenol all night. It stayed at 102 most of the night. And so I'm like, okay, regardless of, COVID or not, when you have a central line, because I had my port, it's gone right now, by the way. See that little incision right there? Yeah, they took it out. It still swelled a bit. It's not happy. But, um, so, either way, with a with a central line, when you have a fever, I'm, I'm, I just realized my speakers are probably covered up. Whoop. But anyway, when you have a fever, you go right, you go into the hospital, you get cultures drawn and stuff like that. Typically, they'll start antibiotics right away. But we still had to go in. So they ended up running a whole viral panel of COVID, flu, A and B, and RSV, all of which were negative. But I still had a fever. I still had, you know, there was pus coming out of my G-tube. It was bad. I knew there was an infection, and the doctor was just like, I'm pretty sure you just have a virus, so go home and rest. The following morning, it was not even 24 hours later after they got the cultures, they called me back and said, you come to the hospital immediately. You're getting admitted for IV antibiotics. So I packed up the bag a little more diligently this time, a little more supply-wise. Um, I packed up my bag, and I... We had to the hospital. And at first, the ER doctor there, they, th these doctors sometimes just crack me up, but she's like, oh, it's just a staph infection. We'll be the, able to get you on, on oral antibiotics and send you home. And I'm like, do you not understand? I have a central line. That is not a you take oral antibiotics and go home situation. This is a you get admitted, you get your line pulled, like typically. I was hoping against all 
odds that they would not pull my line because I'm like, the infection is so obviously in my belly. But because it had moved to the bloodstream and given the bacteria that it was, they said it's not staying in. Um, I have Staph aureus, uh, methicillin susceptible Staph aureus, which, funny enough, is a skin bacteria. Staph lives on your skin, and typically when you get, like, infections, it's Staph. But um, it was Staph aureus. So they said that this is an extremely sticky little bug. It likes to hang around and hide in you. Um, I've had two tests on my heart to make sure it wasn't in my heart and hiding in my heart valves. Um, they pulled my line on t Tuesday. Wait, no. Wait, Monday. Monday? No. No, they didn't pull it on Monday. It was a skeleton crew on the weekend. It was a Saturday. My brain. I can't function. They pulled my line on Saturday. Um, and so tomorrow, Thursday... I'm getting a new port placed, hopefully on probably on this side in the more in the middle, so that it doesn't just go down into the chest tissues, muscles and stuff. Hoping we can place it a little more centrally located so that it's against the bone a little bit more. Either way. Anyway, wherever they put it, they put it. But if they go against the bone a little bit more, it's less likely to flip and stuff, so yeah. Um, funny enough fun fact, um, I've had one flip. The, the tech, the tech, this wasn't the doctor. The tech's like, I've never seen one kind of this bad. She's like, I'm surprised you guys could access it. It was bad. Like, it had, it had completely gone out of its place. But anyway, um, I will be going home on IV antibiotics for at least four weeks. Um, I had gotten home from the hospital, like, two days before Christmas. Um, I spent the first week of January in the hospital. I got home for a few days. Then I went back in, and I was out by Christmas, a little bit before Christmas. And uh, then I was literally back in on the 2nd. <laughs> and it was that time I was like, I'm going to take this. This year is mine. This year is going to be good. This year is going to be great. I'm more stabilized. I'm doing good. And then this happened. And I'm like, really, body? Did you need to be, like, I didn't jinx myself. Like, did you need to do this? So I've been in here ever since. God, it's the 10th already, and I've been in since the 2nd. That's a lot. So we're just getting me. Oh, wow. That's a late age to be diagnosed with type 1. Damn. But, uh, ugh, usually you get diagnosed with that by your teenage years. But, um, yeah, so we're just kind of in a waiting game until we get my new port in and then I get to go home. Doctor said probably Friday. That's really late to get diagnosed, to have di type 1 turn up. But, yeah. So. It's kind of where I've been. I am happy, though, because I will should come home to many, many snacks that are hopefully going to be easy to digest and, like, some suckers and things like that. Lollipops, if you want to call them that, um, because those are really good for me to have because they make it so that I don't want to eat actual food all the time. They help kind of curb that desire to eat a lot. So we're going to kind of try that and see how it goes. But, um, and I should also come home to a new case of Tiger Bull's Puppers. So that'll be fun. I haven't had Puppers before. Yeah, it's kind of, hang on, I'm trying to grab my charger here. When you, when you stop being able to eat is when you really realize how important it is and how ingrained it is in the human psyche to eat food. Um, I shouldn't really... You guys messed that up. Okay. I shouldn't necessarily eat just because it's hard to... It, my body doesn't digest it. It drains. 
There are some things that get through for some reason. Coleslaw goes through, and I don't know. It doesn't digest anyway. Um, I've probably needed a feeding tube for years because my intestines just do not absorb um, and digest. So, But, you know, it is what it is. I've got one now. But uh, it's kind of, it's really interesting being completely sustained by a tube in my belly and an IV in my chest. <laughs> but mine is very severe at this point. Um, when I, you know, a few years ago, I'd have to look back at my year of diagnosis, honestly. But, um... When I first got diagnosed with gastroparesis, it was mild. It was very mild. Um, you're supposed to have only 10% of food left in your stomach after four hours of this test. I had 15%, and it quickly went from I was okay and sustaining myself to I couldn't eat at all and couldn't give get myself nutrition. My body went into starvation mode. I gained 100 pounds, you know, like it was crazy. I've lost that weight, thankfully. My body does a weird thing sometimes where it gains the weight when it's starving and then as soon as I have consistent nutrition, it starts to drop it, like, you know, right off. Man, my pillow is making my back itch. It's because it's sweating. But, uh, oh, food often makes, I mean, food makes me sick. If I eat, I'm going to feel nauseous. Um, like today, my drain has just been kind of sluggish based on because of what I ate. I ate like a chicken sandwich with cheese and bread and cheese are not really good for draining. Yeah, I wasn't able to eat or drink almost anything, um, which was really bad for my pots because hydration is key to keeping your pots in check. I mean, I was passing out before I got my IVs, I was passing out like 60 times a day. It was bad. Well, okay, 60 was my record. I was more like 20 to 30 times a day. Um, and we tried beta blockers, which is one of the ways you treat it. Tried beta blockers, tried, you know, just increasing my electrolyte intake. Um, with I, I was drinking liquid IV, which I love. I still wish I could drink that. I crave it. But it's expensive, and I'm not going to put it in my belly only to drain it you know that is a like I won't go there but it's it's expensive if I was drinking as much as I wanted I would probably be spending a hundred bucks a month on that stuff dude <laughs> I forgot what being hydrated is like when you were when you're going it this week, like, it took a few days for my body to regulate because it was dehydrated to some degree. Um, but they've been running continuous fluids on me, and holy cow, I don't think I've had a diaper that wasn't at least five pounds. My diaper today was probably closer to, like, seven or ten. There was no space left. I leaked all over the bed with that one because I was taking a nap when I... And I woke up and it peed, my bladder peed, and it just was, I'm like, oh, I leaked on the bed a little bit. I told the aide, like, you're going to need to change my sheet. I definitely leaked on the bed of it. I get up and there's this giant puddle. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> that was deceptive. Um, probably at the point, like, if I stay this hydrated, which I probably won't because I'm not going to be on continuous IV fluids, although I feel great with it. It's, it's a, it's not too much, but it feels like, I feel so good with it. I'm, I wish I could just run fluids 24 seven. Fantastic. As far as that goes, like I'm not woozy. I am not stumbling around as much as I was. I don't have the dizziness. It's just been so amazing. So we'll see what, when I see cardio, I think in, I don't know when I see cardio. I'd have to look it up. I'm going to talk to them about that, increasing that fluid intake and stuff. Because we may be able to kind of adjust my tube feeding one a bit and increase the IV so that... Although they are also giving me lactated ringers, which is different than 
So I might see about switching to lactated ringers too because they are slightly different. They have a little more in them than just saline. And I think my body's really enjoying that. Um, I'm peeing like I haven't in forever. I just got here. What's going on with you now? Um, currently I am battling a, well, it's pretty much, to be honest, the blood cultures are coming back negative. So technically it's gone. Um, but I had a bloodstream infection of Staph aureus. Um, as far as in general, what's going on with me medically, gastroparesis is rough. Mast cell is actually semi-stable right now, um, especially when I'm not in the house that I live in because no offense to people, but my roommates do not clean to an appropriate level at all and it is very it causes a lot of reactivity i'm sure there's mold in my house at some somewhere that we just pardon if you hear the noise my feeding tube is doing some a water flush um <laughs> hang on guys one sec hey babe I am doing a YouTube live to keep get me sleepy at some point, hopefully. You don't have to get poked all the time. I don't normally have to get poked all the time. Normally, I get poked once a week. I'm done. Are you referring to the Dexcom? Yeah, those are nice. I know I, I follow a lot of type 1 diabetics. My ex was the type 1 diabetic, so I'm... Pretty savvy with the information. That's a lot. Thankfully, I've not had that. I've had blood clots out the ass, but I've had two blood clots in the last three years. All of which could have led to strokes, but they did not. Thankfully, we caught it in time. Am I on blood thinners, or are, are you talking to John? I am not on blood thinners anymore. I was when I had my clots. I was on them for three months. Yeah. How you doing, hon? You probably can't. I'm surprised. I'm surprised you're up already. Kids aspirin, yeah. Talk, talking to my stream. I'm I'm on YouTube. I'll be done in a few minutes. Warfarin. Yeah. I was on warfarin, I think, at one point, but it wasn't for diabetes. I forget what they had me on. Now I'm just on every antihistamine in the book, pretty much. Other than Zizol. Other than Zizol. Well, I mean, I'm on Claritin, Zyrtec, Benadryl, Famotidine, Singular. Zizel is, oof. you're welcome, John. How has it been a decade? Oh my God. Babe, I've been doing YouTube for like 10 years now. No, a decade is 10 years. You've been doing YouTube as long as fucking Captain Sparkles. I've been doing it a long time. I don't even know who that is. Minecraft guy. Oh. He went to cars. Okay. You've been doing it as long as uh, Life of Tom. I've been doing YouTube since before I moved to Kansas, and March will be 10 years in Kansas. 
right? Dave, you've been doing it longer than Mark. Yeah. Before. I've been doing it since like early 2013. So, yeah, it'll be 10 years. No, Mark, Mark might be better on the time walk scale than you. Oh, I just didn't. I could have got my channel bigger and better. I've thought about doing things like, um, like starting like a vlog type of channel, you know, but yeah, I, doing a game series. I would start a probably, a, I don't know if I would do it on this channel or not, but uh -huh. either way, I thought about doing different things on YouTube. Gaming, we'll, we can do a gaming channel when you come here, we'll game together. You were, I remember telling you I was bored with medical diapers. My God. After this week, there's no... I, I was... I called my nurse in here tonight. I'm like, I need to go change my diaper and stuff. And she was like, I don't know if we have any briefs in here. And I'm like, oh, I've got my own. And I'm like, trust me, the hospital ones would not even contain one pee right now. Like... And then she saw mine and she's like, okay, those are cool. I also did just realize, because somebody mentioned the other day... That the Taika Bulls print, like the onesie. I don't know if it was you, hun, but that it had camo and army guys on it. And was it was you, yeah. Well, I had not thought the diapers had it on there, but today I realized they do have army guys and tanks on them. Yeah. Yep, yep. Why can't they be cute? That's where I want to they see. Well. I would love to see somebody and they just go with uh, like for example Tigables is kind of sort of doing it with like the deluge and the camos but I would love to see somebody just do a completely adult line of diapers you know like just different designs like I could see like doing like a bunch of geometric designs and stuff like I know North Shore did the polka dots and stuff but everybody's are so baby you know, and I would love to see somebody take on just an, a, an entirely, like, nat normal adult, um, you know, style. Like, you can do, like, tools and things like that. You could do coffee. You could do foods. You could do um, cars. Like, like, there's so many different things you could do, but make it more geared toward adults than just babyish, you know. And Tykables does have a few. Yeah. For the hippie people. Like gnomes and mushrooms and things. That would be kind of cool. Obviously, that there's tie dye already, but. You yeah, know. But the tie dye is like so flat. Well, it's. You can only get so 3D on a diaper, my love. I know no, you. No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying like, oh, you can only get so 3D. I'm saying like the colors just are a little bit dull. I mean, it's going to be a little bit dull because of being printed on plastic. But those are pretty damn bright for a diaper. Honestly, I would still use them if they were as good as Tykables. Like, if Tykables went that route and started doing some, like, adult stuff, it would be so nice. I mean, they kind of do. They've got the camo. They've got the deluge coming out. The Galactic is kind of, sort of, going to be adultish, you know. But like, dude, take like the dinosaur diaper and do it like a uh, like skull, like the skeletons and the fossils of dinosaurs and things like that. Like, just go in a, a completely adult route. That would be cool. Space, like actual like spacey things, not this robot or astronaut stuff. Just do like straight up galaxies and stuff. It'd be so cool. What? But they're, I have seen galaxy games, but they're expensive when you find them, and they are hard to find. I have never seen somebody actually do a galaxy diaper, and I have looked at, like, every diaper on the planet. They were a custom-made Oh, see, that's the person that does the stu- the, what they- that person does, all they do is they take a normal diaper- they find a frickin' tablecloth or something like that, and they adhere it to it. 
That's how those are made. Yeah. And they're usually they're expensive for no reason. Exactly. I mean, it takes time and materials. Like that, diapers are pretty yeah, big. Like the table, the tablecloth is like maybe a buck fifty at the dollar store. No, not for those. It's not. Or like four bucks at an art store. Not for galaxy ones like that. I mean, like, basically what he's doing is getting them... He probably is getting them, cust like, basically custom printed, like, plastic that he adheres to it. I know what you're talking about. And it's... Yeah. It's kind of a stupid way of doing it, but... I, it basically yeah. took a Rebel and then... Yeah. Put a cover on That's it the and thing. And jacked up the price astronomically. They weren't even using good diapers. The first one you noticed was the lavender... Lavender. I never use the lavenders because they're scented and I don't do scented. I accidentally bought the monsters. Well, I didn't accidentally buy the monsters. I bought the monsters and didn't realize they were scented. So I basically have a case of XL in my house that I can't use. Oh, God. The Violet Seductions. What about them? Those ones, those ones are very adult ones. They're just a flat they're, Yeah, but that's boring. Not necessarily. It is very boring. You can make a good outfit with those. It's boring. Plain color, boring. Now, the haunted one was a lot better. But I'm sorry, plain so, colors... I love the Halloween one. Plain colors are boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care what color it is. It's still plain color. It's still boring. Like, for example... Dude... Theme it off kind of like my one binky that I have that I made myself that's, like, got the turtles and the narwhals on it. It's, like, this teal color. Um, oh, hell yeah. And do, like, narwhals and, like, under the sea stuff. It'd be so cool. I'm not sure what you're, what you're talking about there, but. Okay, oh, hey, I'm one of your moderators. I should be watching your stream. What the hell am I doing? I mean, there's only four people. My streams don't really need moderation. Um, I know, but extra people. Yeah. One day, maybe I'll get the channel back up and rolling. I would love to do that. But, you know, it's kind of like there weren't funds to do things like trying out different diapers and products and stuff like that. Yeah, I know what metformin is. They also use that in PCOS. It's horrible. It uh it causes IBS. Um, they call it shitformin a lot of times. I know exactly what metformin is. I was on metformin for a short period of time before I said, "Yeah, fuck this." Um, but yeah. I did take Benadryl by the way, so I am starting to kind of feel it kick in a little bit. I managed to wake up before nine to go to my, uh... You remember Secret Garden? What do you mean? By the way, uh, the game dungeon is the person that you're hearing probably on my end. That's my partner right there. Hello. That's my human. I don't know if you can hear them or not, but... That's my partner right there. Five more months till we get to live together. Wait, let's see, January, February, March, April. Well, yeah, five months. Less than five months because we're not going through the whole of May. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure what you mean by the secret garden there, John. Um. Maybe I'm forgetting starting something. It is, yes, but I don't think that's what they're referring to. My brain is shot on what it is. Secret Garden, there's one and only one good actual move. Well, okay, there's two that are decent enough. One of them's really hard to find. One movie that I've been wanting to watch lately is Little Women. It's been ages. Little Women, Anne of Green Gables. I need to watch that. What? I've heard of Little Women, but I haven't watched it. Oh, it's good. I have watched a little bit of Anne of Green Gables. 
Oh, yeah, Facebook. Yes, long time ago. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. It was a group I started on YouTube. It was a group I started on YouTube. Or not YouTube, Facebook. Oh, yeah. I have... I don't remember how much of the book I've read. Um, but I, we, we grew up watching the movie constantly. Another one we watched all the time was a little The Little Princess. That one was good. Um... Little Women we watched all the time. Seven Bride for Seven Brothers. Um, seven Brides for Seven Brothers is my all-time favorite, almost. I wouldn't say that, but it's good. We used to play Seven Brides for Seven Brothers as kids all the damn time. It's so good. It's good. Um, Wood Wildcat. What? You don't know that song where they're like, they, they got kicked out of the house and then they were sad and they thought they would? Oh, the, the Lonesome Polecat? Yeah, Lonesome Polecat, that's what it's called. I'm like, what? <laughs> basically, that stands for I skunk. That stands for basically Lonesome Skunk. I know, but it's still a good song. The whole movie's good. Bless her beautiful hide, like <laughs> the barn raisin. Oh, it's such a good, good movie. Them women were sobbing. sobbing. Yeah, the sobbing women. Yeah. Oh, it was a good movie. Yeah, I watched that not too long ago, like a few years ago. It was weird watching it without my siblings because we watched that one on a regular basis. That Johnny Tremaine, we watched that one. We literally had that the song from that one memorized. We watched Old Yeller, Davy Crockett. I could pretty much, I could pretty much quote Davy Crockett growing up. Dude, Old Yeller is sad. Well, duh. Swiss so Family like, Robinson. When Redfern grows. I I I, I, I I despise that movie. I like it, but I despise it all at the same time. Well, which one? The original one or the remake? The entire storyline. Have you seen the remake? I've seen pretty much every Red Fern there is. I like a really old one, but that's it. If there's more than two? There's a bunch of them. I think there's like four. The only ones I recognize is the original one and then the one that was made when I was a kid. Where they had, like, you know those little, um, they're little red dogs. They're little tiny. Coon hounds. Um. They're coon uh, hounds. Is that an actual breed? Yeah. Well. They look like, they kind of look like sausage dogs to me. No, they're bigger than that. They get very big. Um, they, they think they're, like, red something or another hound, but everybody calls them coon hounds. Pretty. I hate that story and love it all at the same time. Oh my god, Homeward Bound. Never heard of it. Babe, you have an entire education that you need to go through. It's also known as the Incredible Journey. Okay, that's a name I'm familiar with. Dude, how have you not watched well, Homeward Bound? Seen. How have you not watched Homeward Bound? I don't know. Dude. Please. Okay. Milo and Otis. Wait, what? Milo and, o the... Milo and Otis. Oh, I'm familiar with that. I haven't seen it, but I'm familiar. Talking to, they're in, they're in stream too, but, um. Yeah, I use that all the time. That, that It has many different uses, but... You've never seen Milo and Otis. Oh, my God. I cannot... I can't... Babe. I know. We're going to fix things with my movie there. You also have to watch Either Born. Either that or we can plan a date night. No. That's got to wait. All these have to wait. 
no, this is not do it over the internet shit. No. Mm -mm. Have you, um, you have to watch Born Free with me if I can find it. Because that was literally one of my favorite movies growing up. It's exceedingly old. I think it was made in like the... God, when was that made? Now I need to look. Normally I would look this up on my phone, but I'm on the phone. Because YouTube still won't let me do camera on. I don't know why. It's weird. Born, Born Free. Is, uh, forgive me for my very acknowledged, tired brain. What is TNJ? Um, it's a it's a jaw condition. I uh, I actually have well I thought I had TMJ. I, it's actually a EDS. Probably. TMJ, and I think it's a mighty jaw. No, it stands for something or another. What does TMJ stand for? Now I need to know this. <laughs> Research. See, this is how I get info on these things. Okay, Tempor Tempor temporomandibular joint. Ah, okay. They liter it's literally the name of the joint, but basically it's when your jaw kind of clicks and stuff. It doesn't, um, it doesn't just slide properly like it should. But the funny thing is I have a feeling, I have a feeling TMJ is far more linked to, um, to, um, EDS than they know. Most likely. I have had it. Okay, I need to get actual canceled today. I have had TMJ issues since I was a child. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. I don't know if I've ever gotten it officially stuck stuck, but it got pretty close to stuck before. There's a girl with such bad EDS that... There's a girl that I used to follow on TikTok for a while, and she has such bad EDS that she basically had to have her jaw wired shut. Because every time she opened her mouth, it would dislocate, and she could not close her mouth. Yeah, it's not fun. Jaw is one that you don't just get over. Like hips, it's easy to just push it back in and go. But jaws, you can't do that. You know, you can't relocate you your... capability of speech. Well, you can't relocate your own jaw. Once it's stuck, you have to literally... They have to, like, literally pull on it to get it to go back in. Whereas a hip, you can kind of do a certain movements and click it back into place. My thumb is still. Now you have me scared because my jaw on the right side clicks a lot. Clicking is very different than dislocating. Trust me. Typically, with dislocation, you have side to side movement instead of back and forth movement. Um, my jaw dislocated in a very strange way. Not fully dislocated. It was a spasm that kind of caused it to sublux and lock. <laughs> nope. I know that's a troll, but no I know that's a troll, but that's hilarious. Oh, should I dispose of them? No, it's fine. They're not saying anything inappropriate at the moment. Uh, all right. <laughs> ah. I mean, if you have Fair enough. Like that, you would name a no, I don't think I would. Turtle, maybe. If I had a turtle, it might be named Squirtle the Turtle. But Yeah, if you had a turtle named you name it Squirtle. No, I'd probably name him Squirt or Crush, actually. How about a salamander? If I had a salamander, mm -hmm. probably would name him Nico. Or Axel. Nico's an axolotl, not a No. You know salamanders and axolotls are nearly the same thing, right? There is a difference, though. 
There is in certain salamanders, actually tiger salamanders go through a phase where they literally are axolotls and some of them choose not to keep growing up and maturing and they stay an axolotl forever. Yeah. There are subtle differences though. But uh, salamanders, the only difference is that salamanders spend more, like, they go on land a lot, whereas axolotls are exclusively in the water. Yeah. Salamanders are dope. Yeah. Any amphibian or reptile type of deal, I, I'm all down for it. I love them all. However, I would not own them all. I would love to own a ball python, a Lachianus gecko, I wouldn't mind an axolotl, except for I don't really want fish because tanks are annoying to take care of. <laughs> well, you might have to end up having a tank at some point because I don't want an axolotl. I don't condone... Re Here's the thing. Hmm? I don't particularly condone the owning of axolotls. Basically... In the wild, axolotls are going extinct. Axolotls are native to a very specific lake in, I think it's Japan. They're from Mexico. No, is it Mexico? I don't think so. Yeah, they're from, they're from Mexico. Uh, is it Mexico? Where are axolotls found? So, they occur in only two areas. Lake, Me it is Mexico. Mexico, Lake, Mexico's Lake, however you say that, and Lake Chalco. They are critically danger endangered due to pollution and um, humans. But they, they were discovered and they were so cute that it just became, everybody started capturing them. Um... We are, we are severely hindering their ability in the wild. And I do not condone the owning of axolotls so much because of how it came to be that they were captive bred. I mean, that's kind of the same way it happens with all animals that are captive. The problem is, is once... The problem is that the catching of them and the sale of uh, wild caught didn't stop when captive bred ones were being when captive bred became a thing I personally don't want to own an axolotl just because it's not being done ethically by most by most of the world obviously you know there are some but you won't see even like a lot of the reptile breeders and stuff like that the people who are into these types of animals and breed them you won't see much of it. Um, it's random people. Like, there's this one girl who breeds them. I, I'm not incredibly... I really don't like the fact that we're not, like, breeding and releasing and repopulating them. Um, See, that's what I would be doing if I had eggs. No, that's not that... You, you, th I don't know what they're doing for them, but um, they're still completely endangered. They're extremely critically endangered in the wild, and that's happened within, like, the last 10 years. So I'm not hugely okay with owning an axolotl because of that. So, yeah. We could start a, uh, what are they called? Um, not a foundation. Um, one of the thingies where all the donations get, well, all the purchases from the company get donated to, like, the conservation of the wildlife. There's not much more conservation that can be done. People have destroyed it. They're destroying their habitat. There's... Because they are literally only found in two lakes in the entire world, 
it's they've destroyed their habitat and there's not going to be much chance of recovering them. Now, obviously, the fact that we have captive bred ones for that is good. But I just don't personally want to own an axolotl. Also, they're kind of hard to own. They're kind of, like, really hard to raise. And, yeah. They're not hardy. Let's just say that. No, cats are very hardy. Cats are extremely hardy. Like you give it too much of one mat or not enough one mat, it just expires. No, cats are pretty hardy. They are, yes, emo, and they like to find things that like to kill them. But, like, for example, look at the freaking, look at America's level of cat colonies. Cats are very resilient. They just... Once they go, they go. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, to be fair... Colonies here in Malta are insane. I mean, they're huge here, too. There's... There's so many. Some of them... Some of them are hundreds of cats big in one single colony. Um, but the cats are prolific, just like the bunnies. Is a single colony that's 150 to 160 cats a pig. Yeah. Um, cat, like I said, cats are resilient and cats breed and breed and breed. One cat can be responsible for th like hundreds and th or like thousand cats or something like that. Two thousand, I don't know. Just one unneutered cat. And this is why breeding needs to stop because people are breeding and there's so many that need to be rescued. I get kind of breeding to preserve some breeds, but quite honestly, there's too many cats in the world to keep breeding like that. Same with dogs. There's too many dogs in need of homes. There's too many dogs or cats in need of homes. Man, I'm glad I kept the heater on overnight. I had to have them turn up the heat in my room because I had them turn it down. I got in my room and it was 77 degrees. I'm like, okay, I can't handle that. M little old person must have been in my room before me because holy shit. So I had them turn it down to like 70 and it dropped down to 69 in here. And I'm like, okay, I'm too cold. <laughs> Cat plays tag. My cats don't play per se like that, except for with each other at night. They do kind of play a little bit of tag and hide and seek type of deal, but it usually turns into a fight because Leo will corner Simon. Leo's a goblin child. He has a bit of a goblin child. He's cute, but he's just. Calvin, I have, I have pots. So my body does not properly regulate temperature. If I'm in the heat, I will be too hot and I can't cool myself down. Either that or freezing cold. Despite I am either cold or hot, one of the two. Um, but like, Never for example, if I'm out in the heat, um, it's very bad news bears. Because I end up getting woozy and pass out. So, um... I, skinny jeans today. I don't spend much time in the heat and I don't spend time in the cold. I wear hoodies year round because I my... spent some time in the heat during the, sun, the spring when I was there. That wasn't heat. <laughs> when I'm talking <laughs> Kansas, that May in Kansas is gorgeous. May in Kansas is perfect. Give us June, July, and August and it's hell. July especially is really bad. A lot of times in July, you don't see weather under 100. Or a heat index under 100. That's true. Our heat index this last year was 135. I barely stepped... That's almost as bad as Malta. No, that is probably worse than Malta, actually. Malta gets 
upwards of 49 degrees Celsius. Oh, it's 49. What is 49 to? 49 to 50. Hang on. With high humidity. Hang on. Celsius to Fahrenheit. I don't think so, babe. Yeah. That's a hundred and twenty. Yeah, also during the day and get up to that during the summer, especially in August. Malta's average temperature is 81.5. That is the average. Yeah, the average is the most common. What is Kansas average temp in summer? That's not for Kansas. Like 90%. But uh, 135. Either way, if it's that high, people ain't outside. You would be surprised. On days like that, people go and jump in the ocean. Well, yeah, you're going to go. It's actually dangerous to go swimming on days that hot. Yeah, but the ocean's not that cold. Yeah. Because what I'm saying, if you're jumping in the ice cold water from the heat outside, then I can understand it being an issue. <laughs> Bone chilling cold days are rare. Most days are 48 to 50 in the winter. You're not there in the summer. Oh, I thought you were talking about us. Currently, it looks like the highest recorded temperature in Malta is 111 Fahrenheit. I see. We get that all the time here. Yeah. I guess I will expire when I <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. You're going to freeze and you're going to die of heat. Oh boy. Um, 60 is about as cold as I can get. I love being in like 90 degree weather. But my body does not. Um. No, it didn't. Not in May. Yeah, it did? No. I very vividly remember it getting up to It was like the 70s and 80s. It was not 90s in, in May. It's almost never 90s in May. The only reason it got as hot as it did this summer is because we had that stupid, like, heat vortexy thing. And Kansas... No, it wasn't a heat flare. It was like this. It was literally like from the center of the country out. It was the worst heat wave recorded. Who's with you? They're on Discord video call. That's my partner, Chloe. Hello. I'm also known as the game the game. Um, they're the game. What are you in here? I have to scroll back to look. Give me a sec. The game dungeon. Um, you're my partner. You're my partner, therefore you get mod status. 
I thought you had me as much as because of help moderate channels. I don't need moderation. I have almost never needed moderation. There was a little while where we would get, like, raided with some trolls, but that was forever ago. Yeah. Now that I've not been doing so much diaper content, it doesn't happen as much. Oh, well, yeah. But that's going to change eventually. No, not necessarily. Not even with the new patterns coming out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'm, what I'm going to do with my channel. I'm not necessarily, I mean, I'll probably do a video showing them, but that's, that's like a couple videos here and there. And that's that, you know, there's not really, there's not really that much out there right now to do as far as like reviewing products and stuff. There's not much to do. It's the same diaper. It's just a different print. At least everything but the cloth ones that is. And the deluge, because the deluge is their first diaper that will have adhesive tapes. Which makes me mad. Like, that's their signature thing. I don't know what they're changing. The high wild one. We're looking up. We're just waiting for my port surgery on Thursday, and then I should be going home on Friday. Which has me excited. I miss my kitty cats. I love not being around the roommates, but I miss my kitty cats. I miss being home, but I don't miss the people. All right, I've left the stream because I need to finish getting ready to go. Okay. I'm going to leave the stream before too long because I need to go to bed. In the call. You know what, we're going to do this. We're going to turn off my light. There. Oh, that works. My computer's bright enough. Ooh, what'd you do today? I'm annoyed. I need, I'm going to have to probably get up and change and go to the bathroom again before I go to sleep. I need to conserve diapers, though, because Hannah's coming up tomorrow. I don't know what time she's coming up tomorrow, but it'll probably be earlier as opposed to later because she has to work tomorrow night. Wait, what day is tomorrow night? Wednesday? Or what? No, tonight. She's coming today. She works Wednesday nights. I think she works five to something or another. So. Yeah, I haven't missed that. All right, see you later, Nasty. Got to do changing time. I got to go to changing times. I got to go. Cool. The way you walk is embarrassing. Is embarrassing. Nah, you just have need help mobility aids, that's all. Don't be embarrassed by it. Be 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 confident and proud. Don't let other people sway you. Something wrong with using mobility aids. You wouldn't you, my walking my unaided walking is hilarious, okay? Your unaided walking is fucking adorable. My unaided walking has gotten worse since you've been here. I mean, it's a, well, I mean, a lot of it's abdominal pain and I can't stand up straight, but yeah, it's definitely not as good as it was. I, it's, it's really funny. It's really funny when old people can outrun you. Well, that took me dark. Ooh. Nope. Never be ashamed of it. If you're ashamed of something you can't control, then there's an issue. <laughs> um, my legs have feeling just fine. They just have very, very weak and hypermobile joints. I should be braced a lot. I mean, maybe I'm not quite to the need for braces, but it might, it might help me walk a little bit better. Again. What are braces? Again, yeah. <laughs> braces are things that go on like joints to help have stability. 
For example, like if you oh. if you sprain your wrist, you're going to be in a brace. If you sometimes if you break your wrist, you'll be in a brace after your cast. Oh, yeah. No, it's not, but. And there are all different types of braces. Nice. There's all different types of braces. A lot, a very common one for people with like EDS and stuff is uh, AFOs, which are ankle foot orthotics. Um, but um, KFOs, which is knee foot orthotic, I think. Um, then there's hip braces and things. I don't think I'm at the point of a hip brace, but I know I could use some stability in my lower joints. But, hey, it is what it is. Right now, I'm, the problem is with, we run into the problem with me where it's hard to do things like exercise and PT to get my joints better because we have to deal with the POTS aspect of things. If I'm doing too much of that, I'm passing out. And it's more dangerous to be walking and passing out than it is to sit in a wheelchair. But it is what it is, you know? We're working on things. One, one thing at a time. If we ever can get my stomach and my guts to settle down, we will be able to address other things. <laughs> but... But, um... Yeah... Dude, this pump, this pump is so damn loud. Dude, I'm going to not even be asleep for morning blood work at this rate. Oh, they have to poke me today. Yep. Maybe they can pull it from, no. No, they can't usually get it from my IV. They literally have to have the IV team come and ultrasound for blood work typically. Or to the point where they don't even draw blood hardly at all. One girl did get a vein really well. But we're at the point where they pretty much have to use an ultrasound to get any form of anything at this point. Yeah. I wanted to smack that guy that put the IV in right before the, by the nerve. He's like, well, unfortunately, we can't tell nerves on here. I'm like, move it. Don't leave it if it's sitting on a nerve and causing, you know, shooting pain and tingling. Take it the fuck out. Yep. Um, my current IV is up in my, past my, up like in my bicep. I don't like those, but they have to happen sometimes. I think this is like my fifth IV since I've been here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or it's at least the sixth attempt at, attempt at an IV. But, um, yeah. All right, guys. I think I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to try to go to the bathroom and probably change my diaper before I go to sleep. Because if I go to sleep and run this wet, I will leak. <laughs> so. No problem. But, uh. All right, I'm going to real quick. Okay. But, yeah. I'm going to go to sleep, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I have to go to the bathroom, which is going to wake me up a little bit, but hopefully it'll, I'll be able to kind of calm down and go right back to sleep, or right back to tired. Um, I'm still trying to get the stomach to drain, and it's just being sluggish as all hell. But I will. I'll have a good sleep. I got to sleep good tonight. I, I don't know what time I go in PO, because my surgery's not till like, 3.30, so... Oh no. But they could also make me go NPO at midnight because they want me ready for it whenever they have, like, if they get a cancellation or free time, they can come grab me. I need to do my eyebrows. You guys love how my eyebrows grow in. It's like just right here. There's a couple hairs here, but like, ugh. my eyebrows are weird. Anyway, I'm going to go to the bed, call the nurse so I can go to the bathroom. And get some rest in me. So I will see you guys later. I'll probably, I don't know if I'll see you before I go home or not. But I will definitely 
let everybody know when I'm home. So, y'all have a good night. Hopefully I can fix this issue with my computer where I can go live on my computer again. I don't know what its problem is, but I'll try to fix it. So, see you guys later. Have an awesome night. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.